Okay, here's what you actually need to know about triangles for the SAT. The first thing that you're gonna be tested on is the simple fact that triangles have 180 degrees. So if a triangle only has 180 degrees, then you could subtract your 25, subtract your 35, and what is that, 180 minus 60? So then 120 would be your missing angle. This is on the cheat sheet, so you don't need to memorize it, but if you don't have it memorized, what are you doing? And this is also a very basic example of what these might look like. I'll be including a link to a practice video at the end of this video if you actually wanna work on the harder questions that will show up on the SAT, testing these concepts. Next up, we've got types of triangles. And while this is not on your cheat sheet, there are several subtypes of the right triangle that you will find on your cheat sheet. More on that later. So right triangles are pretty straightforward. You just need to know that you have a right angle and these are going to lend themselves to the Pythagorean theorem and special right triangles, which we'll cover in a minute. For equilateral triangles, you need to remember that all the sides are equal. So that means you have equal angles as well. And since you can only have 180 degrees in a triangle, by definition, they would all have to be 60, right? Because 60 times three is gonna be 180. So that's really important to know about equilateral triangles. There's also one other thing that's important about them that I'll show you when I get to the special right triangle section. And then isosceles triangles, you just have to remember that they have two equal sides and two corresponding equal angles. So if you ever see that you have two angles that are the same, you know by default that the two sides are the same and vice versa. There are other types of triangles that exist, but I've never seen them asked about on the SAT. So these are the ones you need to worry about. While not quite as common, you are sometimes also tested on the triangle inequality theorem. And this looks a little bit more complicated than it is. Basically, it's saying the sum of any two sides is greater than the third side. So A and B is gonna be greater combined than C would be by itself. A and C together would be greater than B, so on and so forth. That's it. An example question might be in triangle ABC, Side A is 13 feet long and side B is five feet long. What is a possible side length for side C? So see if you can figure this out on your own. And at a glance, you might be thinking, well, according to the rule, the third side needs to be longer than the two other sides combined. So I feel like we have two right answers here, right? Because like 19 is gonna be too big because 13 plus five is 18. And then 18 is gonna be equal, but they're not allowed to be equal, it has to be greater. So then like eight and 12 would both work, right? The problem is eight plus five is 13, which would be equal to that third side when we combine uh, B and C together. So eight feet would not work either, it's gonna be 12 feet. It would also behoove you to know the exterior angle theorem. This is going to be helpful for questions like this one on the SAT. And basically the exterior angle theorem is if you have a couple of angles, let's say we have A, B, and C, the rule is the exterior angle of any one of these three angles is going to equal the other two added up. Uh, so let me actually show you what that looks like instead of just saying it. So let's say we have this angle here, we'll call this angle uh, D. D is going to be equal to A plus B. And if you think about it, it makes sense because a straight line is also 180 degrees. So if you take 180 degrees and subtract C, you're gonna be left with A and B because there's only 180 degrees in a triangle. Next, we've got the Pythagorean theorem and Pythagorean triples. And your cheat sheet is gonna give you the Pythagorean theorem, which is one you probably already have memorized. It is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And the only thing that students tend to forget about this, at least the ones that I work with, is that c is the hypotenuse. So basically, you're good to switch a and b around. Those are arbitrary, but c must be the hypotenuse. Um, so if we knew, for example, that this was three and this was five and we were trying to figure this out, we would not do three squared plus five squared equals x squared. We would do three squared plus x squared 
equals five squared. And if you know your Pythagorean triples, you would know that this is a three, four, five triangle, and you wouldn't even have to do this because indeed three squared plus four squared would equal five squared. Um, so let's quickly talk about those other Pythagorean triples. The most common ones that you're going to run into on the SAT are the three, four, five. That is the most common. And then I would say tied for likeliness of showing up would be our 5, 12, 13, and our 20, 21, 29. These two are usually just going to be these actual numbers. The 3, 4, 5, though, you might see. Sometimes you'll see a 6, 8, 10, or even a 9, 12, 15, or possibly a 12, 16, 20. So just keep in mind, this 3, 4, 5 ratio can get scaled up. It is the most common Pythagorean triple you're going to come across on the SAT. A Pythagorean triple just being a common set of whole numbers that you will see on a triangle based on the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, and of course, this should go without saying, but this only applies to right triangles because we need that hypotenuse, right? So this works for right triangles only. All right, the last of our more basic stuff is going to be the area of a triangle. And this is on the cheat sheet. It's just BH over 2, base times height divided by 2. The one thing that you want to remember about this is the definition of base and height. Because if we have a right triangle, it's going to be really straightforward. We have a built-in base, which by definition should just be a flat surface that we're sort of, you know, setting the triangle down on. And then our height should go straight up and down. And with a right triangle, we get both of those things in our legs, right? So it's just leg times leg divided by two. That said, it's not quite as easy if we have a more temperamental triangle, say something like this. We have a beautiful base, right? We could set our triangle down like that. And we're like, oh yeah, that's nice. But then these other sides are not going straight up and down. They're, they're all angular. So our height is actually going to be this line here that doesn't exist on the triangle, so we're going to have to create that and kind of figure things out from there. So that's the one thing you want to keep in mind with area. All right, getting into the more advanced stuff, and this is not going to be on the cheat sheet. We have similar triangles, which show up all over the place. So similar triangles, in a nutshell, just have the same angles. So to make things simple, let's take a couple of right triangles. And we could say, um, going back to what we learned about Pythagorean triples, let's just say this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle, right? And the degrees for these guys are roughly 37 degrees and uh, 53 degrees. And then obviously that's 90 degrees, right? So if we have a similar triangle, this guy, here, let's give him a different color. We have a similar triangle, this guy right here, uh, he is also going to have the same exact degrees. So we got 53 up here again, we've got 37 down here again, but visually we can see this guy's bigger. So what's the relationship between the sides? Well, the cool thing is, anytime you have similar triangles, because they have the same degrees, they're going to be proportional. So if this side were six, I would know that this whole thing, as far as the perimeter goes, is twice as big. So we would have six, eight, 10. Likewise, if I had 4.5, I would know that I'm multiplying by one and a half, right? So three would become 4.5, four would become six, five would become 7.5. So they're going to be proportional. However, one side gets scaled up, the whole thing gets scaled up the same way. And a lot of the time, the way that you're going to end up dealing with this is by just setting up a fraction equal to a fraction, or at least that's the way that I like to do it. So if we didn't know our Pythagorean triples and we weren't good at just doing stuff in our head, uh, well, let's, let's make it hard, actually. Let's say we have a, a weird side length here. We have a 10, um, and we're trying to figure out what's the length of the hypotenuse here. What we could do is we could set up a proportion. We could say the smallest side divided by the smallest side is equal to the smallest hypotenuse divided by the target hypotenuse, the big hypotenuse, right? And then from here, we could literally just plug this into Desmos or we could cross multiply, right? 10 times five is 50, three times X is three X. And then our answer ends up being 50 over three, which I don't think can be simplified. 
So there's a little example of how you might set things up. One more important thing to note about similar triangles is the way they look, because sometimes they're gonna tell you that you have similar triangles, but other times you just have to figure it out based on the information they give you. Now there's always gonna be a bunch of text, but visually they're always gonna look the same. So I will just tell you what to look for visually. Anytime you have a right triangle inside of another right triangle, like this, for example, they are going to be similar. And we can see this, right? This is a right angle, this is a right angle, this is literally the same corner, and then these are gonna be the same angles. So these two triangles would be similar triangles by definition. There's also a really cool one where they'll draw a straight line from one of the corners straight down, and this actually creates three similar triangles. We have the whole triangle, and then this triangle is similar, and then this triangle is also similar. So just remember, right triangle inside of right triangle means similar triangles. The one other visual clue that I've seen them giving is when you have a triangle coming out of another triangle, sort of like an hourglass shape. These don't necessarily have to be um, right triangles either. So if we had something like this, these guys by definition are going to be similar because we have this vertical angle. And in case you didn't know, angles that touch tips like this are congruent. And then your caddy corner angles are also going to be congruent. So these guys would line up with each other and these guys would line up with each other. So that's the other visual indicator of similar triangles on the SAT when they're not actually just straight up telling you that they're similar triangles. You've also got your special right triangles and luckily this is also going to show up on the cheat sheet, which is nice. And your special right triangles are going to be your 30, 60, 90 triangle and your 45, 45, 90 triangle. And the reason that these triangles are special is their sides have a special relationship, which is for the, we'll start with the simple one. For the 45, 45, 90, um, if you do want to try to remember it and not have to look at the cheat sheet, I always think two similar angles, two similar sides, square root of two. We have X and X, so your two legs are going to be congruent. And then the hypotenuse is x times the square root of 2. And then for the 30, 60, 90 triangle, I always remember three different angles, three different sides, square root of 3. And our shortest leg is going to be our x. And we know it's the shortest leg because it's across the street from the shortest angle, right? Sometimes they will draw it in a way that you can't tell as easily. So just remember, across the street from our 30 degrees is our shortest one. And then the hypotenuse is going to be 2x. And then the other leg is going to be x times the square root of 3. And as far as remembering which one of these is 2x, I always just remember the hypotenuse has to be the biggest, right? What's bigger, multiplying x by 2 or x, multiplying x by the square root of 3? It's going to obviously be multiplying x by 2. So that's how I remember that one. And the great thing about this is we don't even have to know two sides in order to get the third. If we know that we have... Let's use our 30, 60, 90 triangle. If we have a 30, 60, 90, um, let's say they just give us the 60. By definition, we know the last one's 30. And let's say they just give us the hypotenuse. They're like, this is 10. What is the length of this leg? Well, we follow our little rules. We know that this is going to be our quote unquote x, this is going to be our quote unquote 2x, and this is going to be our quote unquote. Uh, x root 3. Let's call it y so that we don't get confused here. So if this is y, and this is y root 3, and this is 2y, then 2y equals 10, y equals 5, and then our target is going to be 5 root 3. So that's the magic of special right triangles. And then tying into what I said earlier, I mentioned that Equilateral triangles have a really cool thing about them that we were going to go over later. So let's pretend that this is drawn perfectly, and we're told that this is an equilateral triangle. Remember, equilateral triangles have all the same sides and all the same angles, which means all of their angles have to be 60 degrees. So let's say we are given that this is an equilateral triangle, and we are asked for 
the area of this triangle. And the only information that we get is that each side, the base of the triangle is uh, six feet. So how the heck do we find the area? Because we're supposed to have our height, but we don't have the height. Well, the cool thing is if we draw the height, do, 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 we are splitting. Well, first of all, we're creating a right angle. We already know that this is 60 degrees. So boom, this has to be 30 degrees. And now all of a sudden we could say, okay, well, if this is six feet, then this, uh, this smaller triangle is three feet on the bottom, which means this hypotenuse is six feet. And our height is three times the square root of three feet. So then to get our area, now we have a base and a height, right? Our base is still six feet because that was the whole triangle. And then times three root three, all of that divided by two. Um, and you can kind of simplify from there, right? Oh, sorry, we can't see that. So that's how you can sort of combine your knowledge of the triangle types and then the special right triangles. This is something that's pretty common on the SAT. But again, at the end of this video, I'll link to another video that has some actual SAT practice questions you can work through. And then the final concept that you need to know that is not on the cheat sheet is SOHCAHTOA. And a lot of you might have this memorized, but even of those who have it memorized, uh, I've got a lot of students who I know just forget what to do with it. So let's cover this real quick. Starting with our SCA, they all stand for sine, cosine, and tangent, which are usually abbreviated as sin, cos, tan. And then the two letters that come after are going to refer to a fraction. O means opposite. We'll say op for opposite. H means hypotenuse. We'll say height. So, and to be clear, these all refer to right triangles. And what we're doing is we're figuring out the ratio of one side to another based on an angle. So if we have, for example, angle X here, Opposite is going to mean across the street. So let's, we'll just go with another three, four, five. Uh, and then hypotenuse is obviously the hypotenuse. So the sine of X for this triangle that I made is going to be three divided by five. Opposite over hypotenuse. We'll use this uh, same triangle to exemplify the rest of them. If we're talking about cosine, A means adjacent. We'll just say ADJ over H, which is again hypotenuse. So adjacent would be just right alongside. Um, and you might be saying, well, this one's alongside and this one's alongside too. But the one that's not the hypotenuse, basically. So adjacent would be four. And then the hypotenuse again is five, is going to be four over five, right? Tan of X would equal four over five. And then finally, for tangent, we're going to have opposite over adjacent for a. So the opposite would be three. So tan of x would be three over the adjacent, which is four, three over four. And that is Sokotoa. So as you can see, there's a lot going on with triangles on the SAT. If you're a member and you want to get some guided practice in, go ahead and click on this video.